Hello and welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Guys, you know I've been partial about low-wing airplanes, and a lot of you have asked me to review the 210, the Cessna 210, and today I've got one for you sitting right behind me. Stay tuned, we're gonna check it out. As I said, this is a 210. This is a 1975 model. Okay, and one thing that's unique to the two tents, at least the later models, is that they have retractable landing gear. Uh, this is one of those planes you get if you want to get somewhere fast. Okay, and you can do so with the big engine in it. This particular model uses a, a Continental IO 520. And so at takeoff, you've got about 300 horsepower, and then throughout your flight, 65%. Uh, power you about 280 horsepower, which is plenty, but let's go around it. So you see this is a high wing and If you fill this thing up, okay, you've got about six hours worth of flight time That gets you about a thousand miles Now not all pilots can go a thousand miles without need a, a bathroom break even the owner tells me that the the usual trip he goes on maximum it's about four hours so he's got plenty of room uh, to go further if he wanted to and again Cessna 210s you have retractable landing gear that's one of the reasons why you can go fast because you've got less drag on this thing when you first look at it you don't think that this is a retractable landing gear because it sits lower to the ground at least in my opinion but it's pretty neat but anyway, let's let's continue backwards, and we'll check out the interior in a bit. Also, something unique to the two tents is you've got seating for six people, so you can put about 50 pounds in there. But obviously, if you want to load more stuff, your baggage compartment here, manufacturer tells you 50 pounds can go in here. But guess what? You've got even more room. Again, you've got three rows of seating, and you can put that last row down and put more load if you need to. So the useful load on this baby, you've got about 1,600 pounds. And once you fuel up, you still got about 1,100 pounds that you can sit people in. Okay, but let's check out this interior. Now, again, this airplane is a 1975 model. This looks better than some of the newer airplanes that I've seen around. You can see that the owner has taken really good care of it and it's all leather seating. And again, you see the rolls go all the way to the back so you've got room for for up to six people. And let's check out the leg room in here. See, enough ample space. Now, I don't know about sitting all the way in the back, but I know if you're sitting in this second row, something really cool, guess what? See this tracks here? with. All these seats, both the for the pilots and the passengers, you can move them back and forth that way. You know, if somebody needs more leg room, just, just move that seat on up. All right, and you've got your vent. There's two vents in the back there for anybody sitting back there. You've got the two vents up here, okay? And then if we come here where all the magic happens, up here, You've got your two vents for your pilot and co-pilot. But speaking of pilot and co-pilot, let's talk about this cockpit here. Now, you're looking at what I'm looking at. This is not your typical, you don't have any six packs up here. So the, the owner here upgraded the panel. And we'll go through it in a minute. Just give me a second. I think it's better at this angle. All right, so you see what they did here. If you look to the right, it's pretty much empty. Anything that used to be there is gone. And what they did was just put an iPad mount there. So you can have four flight and you still got all of your glass over here, which is pretty neat. But even before that, you look at the leg room. Also for this plane, again, you can move these seats back and forth depending on how short or tall the pilot is. But you've got the room to do so. But look at this panel, guys. I wouldn't go through them, but you see you start here with the G5. Usually you use these smaller G5s as a backup, but these are your main uh, screens here. And when we go on a flight, you guys can see it in action. 
Uh, but the pilot tells me that, you know, he's getting, he's gotten used to this already and it's pretty neat. And also, if you look here, it's got your digital checklist. This is really cool. Actually, I don't even think I've seen this before. Normally, you have a paper checklist whenever you're flying the plane, but this also helps you out if you're in a rush somewhere. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. So speaking of the digital checklist, guys, see, all of these buttons are lit up right now. And what you do is just go through them one by one. Now, if I stay and I don't touch these, they start flashing. That's letting you know that, hey, you need to do something. So just go through them one by one and turn them off. And the longer they stay on, the lights start flashing. You see that? I think this is so neat. Hell, I think every plane should have this. Just because pilots, sometimes we don't want to go through the paper checklist and we forget things. You're you're a human and you're going to forget things. So I thought that was pretty neat. Again, they turned the screen on for us here. You see, that's your digital, uh, your backup. And you've got just about everything you would need. God forbid if these go, goes out. And normally when you have a glass panel like this, they are redundant. So you probably have a uh, battery backup in case something uh, goes wrong. But let's quickly go from left to right here. Uh, you've got your circuit breakers down here. Your ignition is right there. And your throttle mixture and propeller. So something I did mention earlier that this is a constant speed prop. So you can always change your blade angle. So you've got your throttle there, your propeller lever, and that's for your mixture. And I also, this is how you control the uh, the wheels up. You see gear up right there. So if you're flying a complex airplane like this, just be sure to lift that up whenever you need to and put it down when you're coming into land. You've got your trim tabs below there and your flaps right in place. And I love how everything is within touch so you're not looking for something. And then your, your fuel selector down here. So the coolest equipment is up here. This is your XM antenna, all right? And with this, you can do so many things. You can download weather, you can get XM radio through it. Um, and these are, like for example, with weather and, and, and things like that, you can get that through your screen here, but it's also good that you can have it here. And one cool thing about the radio system installed in this aircraft is that you can connect through Bluetooth. So you can use Bluetooth for phone calls to listen to the radio or your own MP3 songs, whatever the case may be. So you've got, for a 1975 plane, you, you're pretty much up to speed. I didn't talk much about numbers, but in terms of price, as equipped right now, you can find these planes around $150,000. Now, if you were to buy something much older or something that needs more work, you can probably find them cheaper. Uh, but as is with this plane, with the nice interior and the upgraded glass cockpit, you're looking about 150 grand. Now, the speed also in cruise, you're looking at about 155 knots, 65% power, and this is at about 10,000 feet. Um, and in that speed, you're also burning around 14 gallons of fuel per hour. Again, I mentioned that once this, once you fill up those tanks, you can go about a thousand miles in this plane, which is pretty superb. So this is a plane, even for a single pilot, if it's just you flying solo, if you need to carry people, you've got the room for it and you've got the useful load. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Again, thanks so much for watching. My name is Mike. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up. And if this is your first time, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you on the next video.
Thank you.